Uh, good morning. It's several days after I started this project, there have been a lot of little bits and pieces that have got in the way. So now I'm finally getting back to it and this is what I've discovered so far. So I've started off repairing this which was rotten and a fiberglass back over that. Now I've got to fair that and finish it all. It's nice and strong with a hardwood block in the middle around the pivot point. Once I started to remove things I found that there was a lot of electrolysis which had penetrated so deeply that the the aluminium is just completely destroyed all the way through. One thing I do have left from the old days when I used to do gymnasium floors and we used to have to cut aluminium uh, trimming pieces is this uh, fine tooth blade for cutting non-ferrous metals. So you'll see, if you look closely there, that every second tooth is a uh, kind of a, what do you call it, it's got beveled edges on it. So it's got uh, two cross cutting teeth and then a beveled edge one in between, very fine and perfectly designed for cutting aluminium and negative rake here, very dangerous trying to cut aluminium all that you can with something like that because of the hook that's on the teeth and that will climb over the top and try and destroy things. Getting this out to find a way that will conserve the material. Okay, so that's all the pieces cut, ready to weld together. So I'm off to see my friend Bruce. Everybody needs a Bruce the welder at the end of their street. And he's just down the street and round the corner and uh, Bruce has a mobile welding business so if you're looking for someone on the Sunshine Coast who's an excellent tradesman does work for a fair price Bruce is your man I a bit of a promo for you so are you interested in a bit of promotion so I'm getting about 10,000 hits a day on my YouTube channel okay so Bruce tell us about your business what do you like to do um pretty much weld everything. I specialise in food plant, uh, fixed plant processing, um, do a lot of machinery stuff, uh, and then any repairs and ongoing maintenance, breakdowns, uh, fix a lot of boats, a lot of cracked holes, and uh, a bit of construction steel as well. I'm mobile, and I do the whole of the Sunshine Coast, so I pretty much areas I do from Brisbane um, all the way up to Noosa. Okay. Uh, out west a bit as well. Okay, so um, you do rudder repairs? Fully mobile, do rudder repairs. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay. Motors, um, yeah. There, there, there's some rudder repairs for you. Beautiful. So we had a bit of electrolysis going on there. Yep. And we just need to uh, obviously weld those extensions on there. So I've taken hacked all the all the cancerous bits off. Yep. There's still a little bit here, but I can manage with that. Yep. Got some significant amounts of damaged corroded metal that I've removed. So I've removed the pieces where the cancer has uh, taken hold, and I had some six mil plate welded on here to extend it back to its original size. Whereas the original plate was four millimeters, so it's going to be a bit stronger than it was originally. And uh, now I've just got to redrill some holes and clean up and prepare the surfaces ready for painting. Stainless steel pieces, they were added by somebody at an earlier stage when this corrosion evidently started, which was most likely when it was sitting on the water for two years up in the, up in the uh, uh, Tin Can Bay Inlet in Snapper Creek.
set one up a bit. Now because we're working with aluminium and not wood, preparation can be as coarse as 80 grit because the scratches are not going to show through. So I'm using this 80 grit uh, wheel. It's not, I guess you could call it a flapper wheel. Um, and that's enough to remove the paint and scuff the surface enough to create a bit of mechanical adhesion. Sometimes I get to thinking that my life might be wrong I wonder what kind of man I'd be if I hadn't moved away From my hometown and the folks wonder what I feel like today All this city thinking's enough to drive a man insane But my mind has always been like the sky before the rain so twisted up sometimes that it's hard to catch breath If I keep doing this, I might think myself to death I try most every style around looking for my thing Let's get a wire brush on here along the world there's a little bit of deeper corrosion there but apart from that the shoe's ready to go wipe down with acetone and ready to etch in prime this is the best kind of countersink for non-ferrous metal including aluminium it'll cut a nice even countersink and it'll cut quite freely Whereas the uh, conventional type of countersink meant for steel or wood will tend to get loaded up with the aluminium. I'll show you how it works. It's a zinc phosphate epoxy. So it requires its own particular solvent because I'm going to be rolling and brushing this and um, and it's mixed on a four to one basis so let's get underway ratio of four to one so initially I just want 100 mils in there and pour it very slowly okay takes time to spread I've got really good ventilation coming through here from my left today. So yeah, that's flattened out there now. We can mix it in. And there's normally a take-up time. You need to leave that to sit. I uh, know some paints say about 15 minutes before you use it. Now I'm using 10% thinners because it just slows down the drying process a little bit and enables it uh, to lay off nicely. But this particular primer, I'm quite impressed with the way it does lay off. I've used another one which um, was far more problematic and caused all sorts of uh, issues. This is laying off beautifully. Even as you're using it in this warm climate, it's about 27 degrees Celsius today. And as you use it, the extra solvent that you've put in there is flashing off. It's been 24 hours since I primed these aluminium components with a zinc based uh, two pack etching primer. I'm about to give them a light sand back and a coat with two pack polyurethane.
thinned it about 10% and it wasn't too hot so it didn't flash off. You gotta watch it when it's windy, if there's a lot of air moving or when the weather's uh, quite warm. And I found high humidity is a problem as well. I mixed up some flow coat, it's a polyester resin flow coat and I mixed it with a fairly heavy dose of micro balloons, comes in a very fine white powder, you've got to be really careful with it because uh, it is something you do not want to breathe and uh, that's gone off really nicely overnight so let's have a bit of a go at that with it bit of 80 grit see how that goes so that sounds really freely I'm using some acetone on a cloth I've already wiped off the majority of the dust and now I'm going over this in a, a very thorough movement sort of working like a wave across so it takes all the dust off over to a really good stir last night at the end of the day so it won't need much now You see a little bit of reaction there. Now that's where there was some very deep corrosion, so it didn't get right back to solid bare metal there. I've been experimenting with the roll and tip method of two pack polyurethane for quite a while now, and sometimes I've got some reasonable results, but I've found that the variables. Uh, are too many and too great so the temperature changes the wind speed changes the humidity changes uh, the product changes the thinners flashes off and the viscosity changes and I just haven't been able to get consistent results so I've decided to bite the bullet I bought a little compressor and a spray gun and uh, I've got a client to do some work for and I'm wanting to produce the highest quality possible Spraying is the way to go. Explains why the compressor came with some oil. So it wasn't for topping up from oil consumed or leaked. It was because they're not actually filled. Just when I look down here, you see the oil level here is below the level that we need. A good thing that I checked that. We'll fire up, see what happens. So the gun runs at 35 psi, which is 2.5 bar. Late in the afternoon, traffic is about 25 degrees, hardly any breeze at all, but just enough cross flow ventilation from the southeast here to keep the atmosphere safe for a short So, these are the aluminium components, and there'll be some residual effect from the fact that I rolled and tipped. I have cut that back. Luckily you can see that there, you can see where I've cut it back. You see the primer showing through a little bit, but just to take the brush strokes off. There'll be some residual brush strokes that'll come through. It won't be perfect as if it had been sprayed from the beginning, but it won't be too bad. The isocyanates that are present in 
2-pack polyurethane are very nasty little chemicals. So um, if you're using it in a confined space, you should be using an airline respirator. If you're using it in open space, then an activated charcoal filter, um, a good new one like this is, is absolutely mandatory. And here I've got very good cross flow coming through from the southeast and out through the front of the garage there. So it's just a short spray. It's not like it's going to be building up in the room. One of the issues is using old paint. So this paint's been around for you know, two or three months right over the summer, about a third of a tin. So one would hope that it hasn't coagulated and created too many lumps in there. And I'm going to thin it to spray. So just doing about hundred minutes. finished spray painting and now it's ready to assemble. I've only put the one coat of finishing coat on the inside because it doesn't matter, it's not the same. So it'll be interesting to see if I've got all the nuts and bolts. When I set out to do this, I really wasn't expecting to have to rebuild the whole thing because I did a sort of a patch up job about two years ago, but the patch up job had well and truly outlasted its uh, purpose and, um, and when I discovered a lot of corrosion in the aluminium parts and rot in the timber parts, I decided it was time to redo the whole thing. So there it is, pretty well back together now. A few little bits and pieces just to tidy up. I could have welded these seams, um, but back in the 80s they didn't have MIG welders and uh, it's a bit more authentic. And I've recycled some of the old parts because it's just got authenticity about it. And I really don't, didn't want to start with a brand new modern looking rudder. Um, it may need a little tension removing here if the timber does swell, but if the timber swells it means I haven't done my job and the moisture is getting into it. bolts just down a little bit further because uh, I need to be able to tension the tiller so you don't want that wobbling so it's got a bit of a wobble in it and I can't tighten these any further than they are already because they're out of thread so Just extending that thread a little bit has enabled me to tighten 
these bolts across here to take all of the wobble out of it. Have I gone over to the dark side? No, just fixing up a bay liner trophy for a friend who promises to take me out fishing one day. Thanks to the subscribers and regular watchers, you're appreciated. If you do enjoy watching these videos, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. About 75% of the viewers aren't subscribed, but if you were, it would help me promote the channel so more people get to enjoy the variety of things I enjoy doing with boats. When you're subscribed, you can choose the playlist that you're interested in, whether it's dinghy cruising in moonlight, restoring fiberglass boats, or tinkering about with old inboards.